Hey everyone, we're gonna have a look at the Moyu RS3M, nope, YS3M. In this video, we'll go through the YS3M ball core version from Moyu. And the question we wanna ask ourselves is, is this the cube for me? We'll try and answer that question by doing a full in-depth review of all the components of this cube. You may have watched the previous video of the unboxing of this linked here, where I compare the YS3M to the Tornado V3. And if you stay to the end, I'll take you through some hints and tricks I use for F2L to make me faster, that I've been able to get some of my best times based on this cube and some of these tricks. So let's go. This is the Y3M ball core box. We know it's the ball core because we can see the picture here and a lot of the mechanism there. Super shiny. And when we open it up, we get inside the card with Yu Shengdu and a QR code. Nothing else in the box. Magic. We get nothing in that box. More magic. Box of accessories and the cube itself. The trick to opening the cube case, which I struggled with at first, is to put your fingers on the side, on the parts that have the curve, squeeze a little bit and it just pops right open. In the accessory box, it's the same box they put in every cube. There's a how to solve manual. It talks a little bit about the structure and the composition of the cube there in terms of how it's made up, but it doesn't really match the design of what we're looking at here, I feel. It seems to be a bit more of like a generic three by three these are spaces which you use when you take the cube apart to actually help you get the top part and the bottom part correct when you're screwing them back together. These don't actually work on the ball core, so I'm not sure why they're included. Screwdriver, this is the tension tool for adjusting the tension, and this is a spare cap, and you actually use this with the tension tool to twist it. And again, we'll go through that a bit later as well. I've put a bit of lube in this one since I first got it, so it's not as sandy as it sounded the first time. Here's that sandy feel of sound. And so the first thing we'll look at is just a couple of the adjustments on how it's put together. First of all, we'll adjust the, no we won't. This doesn't have adjustable magnets here in the edge or here. The Tornado V3 has a one to five adjustment setting there. And some cubes, a lot of the new cubes now have adjustments there. Because this one doesn't have magnets that are adjustable here, and nor are the core magnets adjustable, partly because this is by definition a budget cube, you'll find that its grippiness and sort of self-homing feature really depends on how much lube you've got into it and what your tensions are like. If you have the tensions too tight and so it doesn't rotate very well, you'll find the auto homing feature doesn't really work so well. So part of the balance is having the right lube, having the right tension in order to get that sort of extra feature of the homing magnets. If you don't like the homing magnets or if you find that the particular turning style doesn't suit them, then don't consider this cube. But this cube's really good for me. It suits my turning style and I've been able to get some of my fastest times with it so far. How about you comment below if you've tried this cube and what you think of it and how it compares to some of the other cubes you might have tried, whether it be the Tornado V3 or a GAN cube or something else. Be really good to hear your experience of using the YS3M, especially the ball core, to see if it's any better for you or if it suits your turning style. When we compare the internals of this one, we can see most of the interior walls are quite flat and there's no channels or anything in the actual pieces here. Compared to Tornado V3, we can see this has got quite distinct extra pieces that stick out like that. Kind of reminds me of tortellini or a bowler hat. I don't know what shape to call it, but it's definitely quite different to the insides of this one, which are very flat on the inside. For this one, most of the mechanism is with the actual ends of the piece. And for this one, it has a lot of extra, whatever word you want to use to describe them, that just helps with its control for edge cutting and so on. So let's have a look at the insides. Pop. And we can see it has a purple interior. Usually the Moyu cubes have a blue one, which is a slightly deeper version of this. We have a shorter version of the adjustment mechanism. 
the other part of the inside here is the screw and the screw will control how far apart you can pull it. And so if the screw is screwed in, then the distance this can travel becomes less. If you make the magnet strength tighter, it just pulls it in anyway. And maybe that's one of the reasons they've left this mechanism in here, which they've had for a very long time. So I don't actually adjust the screws. I've also had a really hard time when I have adjusted them on some other cubes to get them back to the same tension, to get them back to the same distance. And so I basically just never use this. If I want to make this distance shorter, I'll just make the magnets stronger and it has the same kind of effect to me. What it does as well when you adjust the screw, it'll affect your ability to corner cut. And so the tighter the screw is, the less corner cutting you'll get because there'll be less flex as you go this way, there's less flex when the screw is screwed in. So if you're a solver who likes the corner cutting, then just leave that as it is. Because this one has the core magnet, you find actually that it'll just home in on the corners a lot easier and you won't need to corner cut as much as you go faster. So let's pop them all open and see how we go. Thankfully the caps on this aren't too hard to pop open. And I've not adjusted this since I got it out of the box. And so I've actually been using it on the default strength and tension. The two adjustments that we have here are, first of all, with this tool, it defines how much pull there is when we do this and how much strength is required to pull it apart. And what this does is, is by having this stronger, it increases the friction as we turn it and so it can slow it down a little bit which may be what you want depending on your turning style. You twist these in an anti-clockwise direction. So the default is on the first setting, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and then you hear a really loud click as it drops further down. So I'm going to set it to three for each of them three, one, two, three. And let's give that a try. See how it feels different. You know, I don't feel a lot of difference there so far. It does feel a bit tighter. So that's now on the highest setting. You can see when it's on the highest because the purple is sticking out the most from the teeth. One of the advantages of this cube I can see quite clearly is you know which color the cap has to go into. Some of the cubes that have primary internals, the inside here is the same color all around. And so sometimes you don't know which cap goes where. I've now set them all to the highest setting, which makes the most amount of tension. And so it actually is really, really hard to pull apart. And it's super slow. And this is very uncomfortable and this does not suit my turning style at all. For me personally, that's too tight. I think I like this one being quite loose. I think that's why people change these from the purple ones to the blue ones of a kit that you can buy just to change the feeling of how these are. So when I got it out of the box, it was all set to the lowest setting. So I'm gonna put them all back to the lowest now and give that another try. And let's put the caps back on. For the lube for this one, I'm actually gonna use Moyu's number one lube. Really with lubes, it's just down to personal preference. You're gonna to have to try a whole bunch of different ones. Because this doesn't have that same mechanism as the Tornado, I feel the only two places you need to lube it are going to be on the edges here, where there's surface contact as it's going around, and on the inside there. You can take it apart and put some lube on it on the internal tracks if you want to. Because this one has a much simpler mechanism, I don't think that's necessary. If you're, for example, wanting to do something with this, then you may definitely want to think about getting some lube specifically on those tortellini pieces. So for this, I'll just put on a drop there and squeeze that in and just work that in like that. 
And what you want to try and do is get it over every one of those internal surfaces and the lube will just start to spread around. And then if you want to try and aim a drop deep inside, bloop, and try and get that on the internal teal colored mechanism, you can do that as well. If you pop a piece out, which I'm not going to do today, you can also just do it straight onto the mechanism there. And that's feeling heaps smoother now. Quite often after I do this, I'll just wipe it down with a alcohol wipe or a cleaning wipe just to get any excess lube off the outside. Let's go over some of the points that we know about it so far. First of all, the price. Bing! This is in Australian dollars and in US dollars. You've got some cheaper options instead of this one. But if you're going to go for a cube, go for this one if you've decided that this one is for you. In my opinion, it suits the stronger turning style, which is what I've got, as opposed to the Tornado or some of the GAN cubes, which are better with a lighter turning style. Once it's set up, it has really good control. I've not had a lot of problems trying to with lockups or, or anything like that. With the right lube, it'll be very smooth as well. But you've also got to counter that with the screw for adjustment for the tensions this way. Is a little bit old hat and it's been the same mechanism in these cubes for quite a few years as we saw in the tornado and other cubes it doesn't have a great tensioning system the other downside is this competes basically with itself and with previous moe products the super rs3m of the three models and this has four models and so the question is which one to buy i think if you are a confident cuber you should buy this one if you have a stronger turning style. If you are not a confident cuber, then go for the cheapest one and work out if it's for you so you don't waste your money. If you're a cuber who's starting out, this might not be the cube for you because of the cost at the higher level of the product range. If you're a beginner cuber, I highly recommend just getting one of the base levels RS3M or the base level YS3M and working out if it style works for you. If you find it too hard to use, then try the Tornado V3 or one of the other cubes that are available. Many, many toys later. And here are some of my F12 tricks. When I'm practicing for F12, I tend to also just focus on the white side for my cross. I will just mix it up, just pushing the corners and the edge pieces out so that my white cross is preserved. So I'm just practicing my F12 edges. When we're doing F12, we want to pair the white corner pieces with its associated edge piece. And this one I can see is orange and blue. And from what I can see here, I have a blue piece here and that's it. So I know there's a piece around the back here as well. I don't know what that is. The one here is either going to be blue and yellow or it could be blue and yellow there. Or this one around here could be orange and blue. So I will pop that up and it's not that, so it's gonna be this one here. And then put that into there. So if I bring it around here and I can see I've got this orange and green piece here, which I know is white. So I know that one's not the corner piece and I can see this one is here. I know both of those have to go there. So for me, that's kind of a nice combination where I can just see easily where it's going to go in. Here I have red and blue and I can see red and green here. I know this corner is solved. I know this corner is solved. So I know that's going to be red and blue there. I also know that it's probably the wrong way around because those don't match. And so when I swing this around, I know it's going to be ready to go into the corner. Effectively, what we're looking for is to try to guess where the piece is that matches the one that we're looking at. So again, we've got red and blue. It's not here, it's not here. It could be this one, or it could be this one in the back. So in this particular case, I might just take a quick peek. And I see that that's that one there, and it's gonna have red on that side, which is here. Bring it down like that, and then slot it in the back and we're good to go. And now I can forget about, not worry about there being a piece there that I know I can make use of. Here's another example. I have my red and green edge piece already in the right place. I have a blue and orange 
piece here and a blue and red piece here. And what I'd like to be able to do is find the green and red corner piece. It's not this, this or this. So it could be this one. I can see a hint of red there. So I know it's going to be this one. So what I do with this is I'll roll it around to here, pop it up, push it back and then slot it in like that. It's kind of like a reverse keyhole. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch the previous video I made on the Y3M and the Tornado V3 unboxing, you can see the link here. And it'd be really helpful if you like and subscribe the video down here. The more subscriptions we get, then the more videos we can make and the more fun we can have together. Thanks. Bye.